Hey, it's Stuart, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. If you are here again, that means you're stuck with me like we're stuck in Azkaban, and if you try and leave, I'll be a Dementor, hunt you down and kiss you. And I think that's because I'm ginger and want to steal your soul. Anyway, so today's episode special shout out goes to Dana Sandri who asked me to do a cameo roast of her and she was a massive bibliophile like myself and we had a mutual connection with the Harry Potter series. So in today's video we are going to look at the Harry Potter and the most obscurest conspiracies and headcanons. So, what we are talking about today is Harry Potter and the obscure conspiracies surrounding everything to do with it. Please hit like, comment, subscribe, all those buttons, smash them. It really helps in this universe. And it, conspiracy one, I love this one because it's actually, it's, it, it's true. It has to be true. The dark Harry Potter. Okay, so Harry Potter is an unintentional Horcrux, right? Like we know that he is a Horcrux. He is a piece of Voldemort's soul in him. He wrecked the Dursleys. He's the reason they were so mean. Like that hidden fragment of Voldemort inside of him influenced the Dursleys, made them toxic and mean and resentful. Like it turned their whole happy family into a negative cesspool. Because think about it, think about it, think about it. When Ginny got the diary, she went wackadoodle. She got a cockadoodle and threw it all over the walls. When Ron got the locket, he went wackadoodle. He went wackadoodle, cockadoodle all the way and he was jealous and resentful and he was constantly in his own head. So, ergo, Harry, being a horcrux with dark magic, influenced the family dynamic of the Dursleys. It does make sense because Petunia, yes, was jealous because Lily got to go do magic, but she wanted to learn magic. Y'all better be getting those tinfoil magic hats ready because we are going out of here. <laughs> I, I genuinely think like that should have been a canon in the books and J.K. Rowling coming out years later saying, yeah. <laughs> so conspiracy number two, Hermione is a master manipulator. <laughs> Pull out your spell books for this one because Hermione Granger, the brightest witch of her age, is not so innocent as everything suggests. I mean, Hermione, seemingly the bookworm, is actually the master manipulator behind everyone. Doing the shit she doesn't want to do. She is a politician puppeting everyone. Like, all the wild endeavors came from her. The illegal potions, orchestrating spells, Dumbledore's army, the enchanted cursed parchment. This theory proposes this young witch was manipulating Harry and Ron. Hermione managed to keep her hands clean and polished like I can't think of any politicians right now. Hermione, anyway, is the master manipulator. <coughs> okay, number three, and it's probably definitely not true, and Sirius Black is alive. At the very last moment, at the very last moment, I, I just, I actually just want this to be true because I just finished all the young dudes, and basically, reading this fan fictional series, a queer Harry Potter fan fiction series. I loved it. Ramus and Sirius and just learning about how the Marauders grew up in Hogwarts. I loved it. Ooh, ow. I, I genuinely love this series. As I was reading it, I was like, wow, nostalgia right now. Watching these kids grow, go through adolescence, adversity, but it's got a lot more adult themes because, but we are going with them as they traverse like the, the bloody first Wizarding World War. Uh, Ramus Lupin's own background. It was it's genuinely such a good book I would highly recommend it and I was so happy reading it like being all nostalgic and I was like this is a death of a thousand Dobby's Dobby dies Dobby dies Dobby dies a thousand times No, no, I got to the very last page of the book and I was like this can't end here Because I know what happens next in this series, but here's what I think you okay? Come on. Pip, come on. Let me tell you about my non-existent love life and how I live vicariously through fictional characters from a franchise. So anyway, Sirius Black at the very last moment pops behind the veil. Like, do you know the way you need to be to actually go into it and through it? So what he does is he pops behind it, the spell goes through it, and he just apparates. He apparates, and himself and Rain is slooping, go and live happily ever after. By the way, major spoiler, if you haven't read All the Young Dudes, go read it. That is probably one conspiracy that is definitely not true. Wait a minute! Who are you? Do you mind? 
my hair. My hair, boy. Get off my hair. Hey! Do you know what? Cats. Yeah, you know Crookshanks? If you've only seen the movies, you probably don't. Crookshanks is 159,000% an illegal Animagus who pulled a piece of Pettigrew and just stayed in their Animagus forms. You hopping down? So Crookshanks is anyway an Animagus, right? An illegal Animagus, not by the book. So no one knows that Crookshanks is actually another person. Enough said on that. But anyway, Crookshanks, secret spy, went to live with the Potters because Lily said that the cat Harry was running around while playing on his little toy broomstick. That cat was Crookshanks because Dumbledore wasn't going to leave the Potters go off with the chosen one by themselves. So Crookshanks is implanted in the Potters, but then the Potters go, so no need for Crookshanks anymore, until Dumbledore wanted to keep an eye on Harry in the school, but didn't want to seem like an absolute weirdo doing it. He put Crookshanks in the pet shop, knowing that Hermione was going to get a pet. How do you know that? Plot hole. It's Dumbledore. And then Crookshanks keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to Dumbledore. That's why Crookshanks always seems so weird. I think I really just want a series of like McGonagall and Crookshanks in cat forms, just like going around during the first Wizarding World War being like, I mean, it's all right. Like, overrated as f in my opinion. Oh, actually, that's my next point. Fred and George Weasley knew about Peter Pettigrew. They knew that the rat was probably an Animagus, and that's how they actually got into the map in the first place, because we know that Fred and George had the map since first year, right? Okay, it's all lining up. Everything is coming together. How, how would they know? I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. It was a secret spell. Like, that probably just wasn't on the back of it. Like, do you remember when Snape tried to say... Do you remember when Snape tried to see what was in the enchanted parchment and they told him to get his greasy face out of it? They needed the password. So something happened to the point where like they realized that Peter Pettigrew was Scabbers. They just realized that this grubby old man was their rat. And they probably thought, you know, like this guy just wants free room and board. He just wants to be a rat the rest of his life. Like, peace, dude, you do you. Peter, being a former Marauder Wormtail, told them how to open the map. It wasn't even Ron's rat, it was probably Percy, and they were just like, <laughs> deuces to this brother we don't like. But everything is lining up. It's all a conspiracy, man. Oh, here's a really good one. I wish this was the plot twist we all got at the end of Deathly Hallows. Neville Longbottom is the chosen one. Because if you remember when um, Trelawney, that's her name, Trelawney, oh, how can we forget Trelawney, gave Dumbledore the prophecy, she was like, it could have been eeny, meeny, miny, we'll go with this one. Imagine if Harry looked into the pensive at the very end and saw that it was actually <laughs> Neville Longbottom. And Dumbledore just being like, make him a red herring. Yes, this is my Dumbledore voice. This is my Dumbledore voice. Hogwarts will always be there for those who ask for it. Yes, yes, very good. Uh, what is that? Oh, McGonagall sent all the Slytherins away. Why? Because she didn't want any of the students whose parents were Death Eaters, she didn't want any of them to see their parents get. All right, you magical theorists, we have just rambled through the tinfoiled wizard hash conspiracy theory world of Harry Potter. But like, what would you like us to talk about next? What would you like us to discuss next? Conspiracies, discussions, reviews? Drop your comments down below. Oh, and please like, comment, subscribe. Otherwise, I will crucio, I mean, imperio you, or else I'll about the cadaver you to do it. The boy who lived. It's time to stop, okay? Until next time, stay curious, stay bewitched, and solemnly swear we're up to no good. Bye.